In today's video, we're going to go over working with cherry, the American hardwood that turns a beautiful red once it ages a little bit, one of the few woods that arguably looks better when it ages. Now to get the basics out of the way here, cherry has a Janka hardness of about 950. White oak, you're looking at the 1500, 1800, kind of around that range, and poplar is about 550. Now my grading scale for working with lumbers is one is poplar, 10 is like an ironwood, something that's just absurdly hard. So everything is graded from one poplar to 10 ironwood because I think poplar is one of the best beginner woods to work with. I like it more than pine and I just think it works so well. So that's a one for me. Now pricing on cherry is gonna depend on where you live and a lot of it's gonna depend upon the grade. Now, different places have different grading, but a lot of times it essentially just refers to how much of the face of the board is clean heartwood versus we've got cherry, which has an incredibly distinct white sapwood. You get into figure a little bit, you can get grading where one side is an A, the other is a B. Uh, these pieces here are all A, and these were both B, even though this one, A, B, sorry which has uh, heartwood on both sides. They came from the same board, which has some sapwood. So these were A, B, and then these were all A, and these have some figure in them, so they were a little more. Pricing for cherry, you're looking anywhere from like $7 a board foot to upwards of $18, $19 a board foot for really wide boards that are nothing but heartwood, figure, that kind of thing. And in case you're not aware, a board foot is a 12 by 12 section that is one inch thick, it's how lumber is measured. It's, so that's just when I refer to board foot prices, that's what I'm talking about. A 24 inch long board that's six inches wide is one board foot, as well as a 12 inch board that's 12 inches, one board foot. So reference for the pricing is that. Now, one of the most important things with cherry is the striking color. It's really good to work with, which I'll go into in a second. But one of the reasons people love it is it has this incredible reddish brown tone and it gets darker and deeper with age. Now these two have been planed within the last 24, 48 hours. These have been sitting in my shop for probably a year and this one's probably about seven or eight months old. So you can see the different levels of darkness and how dark it can get. There's no finish on any of these. I'm a huge fan of cherry and I think it's pretty approachable for people new on, though I'm not sure it should be your first hardwood because it can be a little pricey and it can be a little problematic in certain areas, though if you are going into the hardwoods and it's your first one, you're probably gonna be okay. So we're gonna go through the process of building a piece in terms of each stage. So we're gonna start with the milling process, jointing and planing. Now I do my jointing on a planer sled, so I can't say how it would do on a jointer, but obviously a planer sled is essentially just an upside down jointer. For milling, for me, this is a four. Mill's incredibly easy. Uh, you get almost no tear out, even on the figured pieces, it's not super dense figure. So as long as your blades are even modestly sharp, you get almost no tear out. It hand planes incredibly well. Uh, it's a very easy wood to mill, definitely approachable in that area. The next part of the milling process is the table saw. Now, this is where cherry is about a five, five and a half, mainly because of tear out on cross cuts. It's very tear out prone. I don't know if you can see some here, but there's definitely some tear out there. And it can burn if you get your table saw feed rate wrong, your blade is a little dull, it has a propensity to burn. There's even some burning on the side of this uh, from a router bit. I don't know if you can see that right there. Um, it can definitely burn if the feed rate is wrong, if your router bit's moving too fast, that kind of thing. But it cuts really nicely. You just have to prepare for tear out. So even blue tape, zero clearance, things like that can leave you with a really good finished edge on the table saw. Next, we're gonna go into using the router. And you're gonna notice a theme with a lot of these that tear out is really one of the only main concerns. Using a router, I'd give it a four. It routes really well. Uh, there can be burning on the router table or the handheld router if you're using a very large bit and you're going slow uh, or your blade's too fast, your feed rate's too slow. Any of those things that can cause burning, cherry is definitely prone to burning. And if you're doing any kind of plunge routing, make sure to use some kind of downcut spiral bit to avoid tear out on top. Uh, it definitely can tear out. You have to be very careful about that. And like I said, burning, but it's a four because it's easy to work with. It's easy to go through the actual process 
of moving the router through it and that sort of thing. It's, it's very easy, it's very pleasant. And one of the best things along the whole way is you get a very nice smell. Cherry smells really good. On the bandsaw, I'd give it about a four. Tear out again. Um, you can have some burning if you're doing really tight corners and you leave the blade gets a little stuck and it's kind of rubbing for too long, but it cuts really well. Obviously thickness, the size of your bandsaw, the motor, all of those things on your tools are gonna matter as well, but definitely a four on the bandsaw. And something like a four means that the, you're gonna need a little bit of a motor, you know, maybe a half horsepower. You can do it on something smaller, but it just works easier when you get a little bit of power in your tools. In terms of sanding, I'm going to give it a four again. It sands very well. You're not going to have much heat build up. You're not going to go through a ton of paper. It doesn't have any oil content. It does take um, a little while for the color to come back every time you remove the top layer. So if you've had it and you've been working on it for a few days and it's a nice uh, reddish color you like and you go to sand it, same with planing, it's going to remove all that. Uh, sunlight, UV, oxygen are what bring back the color, and we'll touch on a bit in the finishing part about that. But don't be worried when you're sanding if it becomes much lighter all of a sudden. You're going to get that color back. Chiseling's a five. Um, you know, it's a hardwood. It, it's not as easy to chisel as like a poplar. End grain can be, you know, you got to have a real sharp chisel, but the face totally fine. On the edge grain, you can get a little bit of that kind of pulling if you're going in the wrong direction of the grain. It'll want to tear with it a bit and make sure you champ for your edges if you're going to be going down to a line so you don't get tear out there as well. Uh, it chops pretty well. I'd give that maybe a four and a half. Like I said, it, it's a hardwood, so it's not easy but if you have any experience uh with the kind of the walnut soft maple poplar you know a little bit above you're going to be okay sharp tools matter they matter for every wood but they matter the harder you get now in terms of glue up this is a one uh there's no oil to get away it's relatively easy to glue up there's just there's no problems whatsoever it's just like any other domestic hardwood uh, you do have to worry a slight bit about denting. If you're whacking on it with a mallet, you're going to have to probably uh, fix that. You can see it does get some scratches. So make sure that if you're doing the glue up that you either are very careful or have the ability to go back and sand or plane before applying the finish because it is uh, low enough on the Jenka scale that it can dent or scratch. Now, in terms of finishing, this one's going to be a two. Uh, it takes oil very well. It darkens beautifully. Lacquer, fine. Polyurethane, fine. Uh, wax oil finishes. This works every finish that is normally used in American woodworking totally fine. Um, now, what I want to get to is the outdoor finishes. Now, I wouldn't suggest using this wood outdoors, but some people just happen to have around uh, some of that exterior polyurethane that is UV blocking. And like I mentioned earlier, to return the red color, oxygen and UV matter. Uh, oxygen less so a little bit, but UV light especially. So if you apply an exterior polyurethane, something that is intended to block UV for outdoor woods, it's going to be slower to turn red. I could take, you know, months, a year. Um, it really is dependent upon how much light gets on it. So just be aware if you're using an exterior finish that blocks UV, and like I said, it's not an exterior wood, uh, it will take longer for your color to come back. So factor that into your expectations as to how long it will take to get this really deep red color. So overall, I give Cherry a four. It's a really fun word to work with. It's beautiful. The price is approachable, especially if you're willing to go with something like an AB grade and maybe one side has some sapwood, but the other side is all heartwood. And you know, you can hide this on the inside or the interior, something like that. Save yourself some money. Um, you can definitely find large boards of it with heartwood. It's not the easiest to find, but uh, you know, search around for your suppliers. This is a, a 12 inch piece, total heartwood. These are about six inches after being cut. They started at seven total heartwood. Um, so it's definitely able to be found, especially in America. Now it's mostly grown, I believe in the kind of central and Eastern America. So prices may be more out on the West coast, but these days trees are being grown all over the place that aren't uh, indigenous to those areas. So it may not be too bad. I don't know offhand West coast pricing, but it's a domestic hardwood. So it's definitely available. 
So overall, while I wouldn't say this should be your first uh, exploration into hardwoods, I still think poplar, if you're stepping up from pine, should be your first step into the hardwoods. It's definitely on the list of things right after poplar along with walnut and soft maple in terms of workability. Just protect yourself from the tear out and be careful with your feed rates and your sharpness because you'll have a little burning if you don't get those right. I just wanted to get up a little closer here so you can see the color again planed like two days ago about six months and at least a year maybe two uh, the blue lighting in here makes it a little hard to see the red this angle is a little better but absolutely gorgeous when it ages a bit there's obviously some mineral spirits on here so you can see the color with the finish that may give a little bit better of the red color very dark and then here you can see that sapwood demarcation it's very noticeable which you can absolutely bring into your project sapwood can look really good in certain uses um, thank you for watching and i hope this helps you better understand cherry and whether it's right for you